to talk about this morning. And so I, re and I, I really struggled with this sermon to try to get it into a 30-minute capsule and, um, or 40 minutes, uh, hopefully uh, I can do it. But there's so much other areas around this, and I'm going to continue uh, talking about this in, in the future Sundays. Hopefully we'll be able to get all your questions answered on this because I'm not going to be dealing everything with the mind. I, I did a whole sermon series on the mind, which you can find on our website. Um, but this morning, I want to give us a sense of being able to discern the difference between um, a humanistic thought, uh, a God thought, and the devil's thoughts that may be in our mind. And so let's start with a scripture uh, that is sometimes misquoted and, um, um, oh, there you go. What are you thinking about? <laughs> but, um, and it's Isaiah 55, verse 6. And I'm going to read a few verses here. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and, and to our God and he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. And so what the scripture is doing here is giving us a contrast. And I've often heard this scripture uh, being quoted to Christians. And I don't think this scripture is pertinent towards Christians. And I'll tell you why as I go along in my message this morning. But what the author is trying to do is he's trying to call them to a place of repentance. He's saying, look, at your thoughts and God's thoughts outside of Christ, outside of, of faith in Christ, they're not the same. And, uh, and so we just finished sending out uh, 9,000, we just reached out to 9,000 homes in this whole region on Slocan Valley. Somebody phoned me from Slocan Valley and said, so, Jim, you sent me some junk mail. <laughs> and I said, well, it's actually pretty good mail, you know. And, uh, and so he said, well, we threw it in the garbage. And I said, well, there you go. God bless you. And, um, <laughs> but, you know, we want, we, the, people who don't have a faith in God don't understand God. <laughs> it's just not possible. And that's why, unless the Holy Spirit is involved, nobody can actually understand who God is. You know, and we have sometimes thought that if we just give people knowledge, they'll be able to figure out God. It is actually, a, you're coming from the wrong perspective. We need the Holy Spirit to touch their spirit so that they come to an understanding that their thoughts and God's thoughts are not the same. And, but if they seek Him, they can actually experience the living God. And so if we look at this other scripture and, and, and in Colossians chapter 1, because you see, in Colossians chapter 1, it says, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds, everybody say mind, against God. And so, you know, uh, giving people knowledge just in itself is not enough. That we are alienated from God in our minds, but there's something very exciting happened. Hallelujah. He says, now you have been reconciled by Christ, physical bodies through death, to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. What he's saying is, is that through the death and resurrection of Christ, we are no longer alienated from God in our minds, but now we are reconciled with God and that we and God and us become one in the sense of his spirit is now in my spirit. My spirit comes alive. This is an amazing truth. And it takes religion right out of it. You see, see no longer is this a religious experience where I can tick all the boxes and I know I fit in because I get into this little box and everybody else in this box agrees with me and we're all good and we're all together and we're doing this thing by works. No, it's something different. It's about a relationship where God's spirit is connected in my spirit and we are now one. And so, so um, when this, the, it, the apostle Paul calls it a secret wisdom. 
A secret wisdom is revealed to us. You see, and the reason he calls it a secret wisdom is because you're just like a secret, right? You, 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 you know something that I don't. It's a secret. But when the secret is revealed, and that's exactly what happened, and so we, he looks at this, and we looked at the scripture um, last week uh, on, in the Sunday sermon, and, and um, I really felt that I needed to uh, bring this up again. Because he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we, we, this, uh, he talks about God's secret wisdom. A wisdom that has been hidden and that God has destined for our glory before time began. You know, there's a, there's a wisdom from God. It's a secret. It's a secret not in a sense that nobody can know it. And like the agnostics might um, uh, talk about. No, it's something different. It's a, the, it's a secret that God has hidden from the world because our minds have been alienated from God. But when our spirit comes alive in Christ, the wisdom of God is revealed to us. And in our spirit we can actually know things that nobody else will know because our spirit and God's spirit are now one. This is an amazing truth. It's a revelation. How many ever had this experience? You know, you're reading the Bible before you're a Christian. When I read the Bible before I was a Christian, it did not make sense. It was just gobbledygook. And I had no desire to read it. When I became a Christian, or in other words, when I accepted Christ as my Savior, when my spirit was united with God's spirit, the word of God came alive. It just, boo look at that. You know? And, and it's so exciting. Listen, saints, never lose it, eh? You know, you get used to it, and you get, you know, commonplace, and, and uh, oh, my. And, and uh, so we talked a little bit about my, my last sermon series on, 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 uh, on how to, you know, get connected with God. But, you know, um, he says, look at this. He says, no, we seek a wisdom that has been hidden and that God is destined for our glory. Now look at verse 8. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. And that is exactly the situation for those whose spirit has not been united with God's spirit. They have no idea. If you've got loved ones in your family that aren't, that, um, aren't, aren't uh, uh, disciples of Jesus, haven't a faith, they have no idea. They don't understand. So don't get mad at them. Don't, don't be frustrated. Just understand that they don't understand. And pray for them. Seek God for them so that their spirit will be united with God's spirit. But look at verse 10. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way. Everybody say, in the same way. In the same way. In the same way, just like my thoughts are my thoughts. You don't, you, you're not privy to my thoughts. They're, they're secret to you. However, when my spirit gets connected with God's spirit, God's thoughts become my thoughts. We have not, he says in verse 12, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we may, everybody say, understand. Come on, that we may understand what God has freely given to us. Now, look at this verse here. Um, th this is uh, going back to Isaiah, but before I do that, I'm, I thought I had it, but maybe I didn't. We'll go here just a minute. But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. Yeah, no, let's go to the next one. There we go. No, no it's not going over. All right. This is what we are. This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. So, this is what we speak. Where does a thought, when you get a thought, before you can speak, you have to have the thought. The words are simply 
putting clothing on the thoughts. When, when we speak a word, we have to first think it. That's why we say to people, please engage your mind before you open your mouth. <laughs> you, you, you think first, well, at least we hope you do, and then you speak. Actually, you are thinking it, but you're just not um, judging what you're thinking, and uh, you may be speaking uh, too quickly. And, but he says, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. So, the, the, so this is, see, the man, the person without the spirit, it's all foolishness to them. So saints, we just did this, um, sent out these cards to folks. We are believing God that God the Holy Spirit will draw them and open up their spirit so that this is no longer foolishness to them, but that they can experience God. And now, I'm saying all this to teach us that God speaks to us. Notice the portion of the scripture where it says the thought becomes a word. So I want us to go back now to um, Isaiah 55. So because in Isaiah 55, because remember in Isaiah 55, the preceding verses to this, it was talking about that our thoughts are not God, your thoughts and my thoughts are not your thoughts and you know, our, my, God's ways are not your ways. And, uh, but he says he, he's calling us to come and to search God out. So now he says in verse 10, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Verse 11, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Isn't that a powerful, wonderful promise? My word goes out from my mouth. In other words, God's thoughts. So the word of God is actually God's thoughts. It's God's thought that's coming through to us and it's expressing to us. It's a, it'll accomplish what I desire. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. I want you to notice that, that this is not an instantaneous event. See, 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 you know, sometimes we think, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, pray, and then, boom, the mountains should start jumping for joy for me. It's a process. Notice he uses this words that it takes time. There's seed that will produce its fruit in its season. And so when we begin to uh, use God's thoughts, bring them in, um, you know, they, in 1 Corinthians 2.14, the man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God for they are foolish to him and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The point that I'm trying to make this morning is that when we become saved, and when our spirit is united with God's spirit, our thoughts now are intermingled. And it's no longer my thought, but it's our thought. In other words, God's thought and my thought become one. Think about that for a minute. So, I'll give you an example here. In, uh, so the, um, let's go to the next word. So in Acts chapter 17, Paul is in Athens. He gets a thought, it's a God thought, that he should go and preach the gospel. And he's in Athens, and as he walked around, it says, he, and look carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar there. He's telling the folks to, uh, 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 to the unknown God. Now, what you worship is something unknown I'm going to proclaim to you. And so this is what he did. He began to preach Christ. Now, see, what he was doing was he was understanding that because our thoughts are not God's thoughts, there is a longing in our spirit. Every single person who's not a Christian, all your family members who aren't following Christ at this moment, do not be discouraged because there is a longing in their spirit. They may... 
present it differently. They may be um, even angry. They may be fighting God. But there is a longing in their spirit to be connected to the spirit that created them. There's a pull. And so the Apostle Paul says that, that I am going to proclaim to you to this unknown God that you're worshiping. And now notice this. And God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out to him and find him, though he's not far from us. Now I want you to notice this. This is, we're getting to the crux of my message this morning. For in him we live and exist. This is from the, uh, the Amplified Bible. That is, in him we actually have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are also his children. So, discerning the voice of God. And this is where I used to get so confused. I thought, man, I just, you know, I feel God speaking to me, but then is it me? Is it God? It, what, you know, what's going on in my head? And I began to slowly realize that God's spirit and my spirit are connected. We're like one. And that I, I just settled, I just kind of, you know, uh, uh, over time, just, and I, this is what I want you to do, is to get to relax and realize that God actually is speaking to you and to me all the time. That he, he's communicating with us and we don't recognize. He said, you know, what I was thinking this morning, um, you know, Halloween's coming up uh, tomorrow and uh, we need to take the spooky out of the spook. Spook being the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us and is not spooky, loopy, or creepy. I, I know some loopy Christians. You might have met them. Every, every second sentence, they're saying, well, God told me. God talked to me. God spoke to me. And then they tell you a little bit what God spoke, and you go, oh, my goodness. And, and you know, they're, they're well-meaning. They have a hunger and desire to be connected with God. But they've created this kind of atmosphere where it's not normal. It's not practical. It's not every day. When I was making coffee this morning in my wonderful espresso machine that my wife allowed me to buy, she told me that I couldn't have a Christmas present, an anniversary present, a birthday present, because I bought an espresso machine. Can you believe that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm hoping she'll forget that she said those things. Anyway, as I was making my coffee this morning, I said to myself, this is just as spiritual as praying. And what do you think of that? And I'll tell you why. What we've done is that we've created two compartments. We've created a little box now I'm very spiritual. Oh, but now I'm over here making coffee. Now I'm just natural. God doesn't think of us that way. I live and move and I am in him. What does that say here? In him we live and move and exist. Everything I do is in God. Think about that. Everything I do is in God. My thoughts. And so I, I just, you're just talking about discerning the voice of God. And so I am just living in God. And God and I, we're working together, hallelujah. And we're living together. And in the morning I get up and I'm with God. And when I go to bed at night, I'm with God. And when I'm going to work, I'm with God. And when I'm going to sleep, I'm with God. And when I'm watching the Canucks, well, God leaves me. No, he's with me. And he's commiserating with me, you know. He's saying, oh, those Canucks. You know, saints, what we've done is that we've created religion instead of relationship. God is in me, and I live and move in him.
what we've done is we separate ourselves from God. See, we see God not as a part of us, that somehow he exists outside of us. So then our thoughts become my thoughts and God's thoughts. But what God wants to do when our spirit gets connected with him, it becomes our thoughts. <laughs> our thoughts. In other words, God and me, we're united. God and you are united. But this doesn't happen outside of some intimacy. Remember I said last week that, you know, when you've been married for 43 years, you begin to, you know, finish each other's sentences. And, and if you've got a really close friends and, and you're hanging out with them and you kind of get a sense of what they're thinking, how many know what I'm talking about? is because you're intimate. You see, when I'm not talking about where it's some kind of a spooky thing, it's, I'm talking about a relationship with God where God and I, you and God, become intimate together. You're spending time with each other. You're connecting with each other. And you're sensing each other's presence together each and every week. It's, it's, and it, 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 there's a movement of intimacy. It's not just like a, a one, you know, like sometimes I think we've, we've done crazy things with, with church. And we said, you know, you come to church, you come up, maybe come up here to the altar and you seek God and then you go out and you forget about God. And we see that as a great experience. No, it's, there are times when we have a good experience and, that, and that's valuable and, 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 and needed. Intimate relationship is not, you know, one, um, you know, great experience after another. It's, a, it's a, a life together. And so I want to share with you, now, there's three sources. I mentioned it right at the beginning, but there's three sources that we get our thoughts from. We, there can be humanistic or from our inner self, our human thoughts. They could be from God or they could be from the devil. So how are you going to discern which one is which? And when I, I, uh, when I grew up, I grew up on the farm, and uh, it was really important for farmers, all those who come from the prairies will know this, that the plow has to be straight line, and the fences have to be straight. That was really important. My dad told me that you've got to make this fence straight, and so he told me how to do it. How many know how to make a straight fence? Does anybody know? Put your hand up. Nobody knows? Oh, one person knows. You get three points. You get your fence post over there where you want it to be. You have fence post there and you put a fence post in the middle and then you draw your straight line and you got to have three points. And the three points will make a straight line. Well, there's three points in, um, in knowing if your thoughts are from God or not. And these, if the first point is very important. If your thoughts are leading you to peace... That's your very first and your probably your most important one right at the beginning. If your thoughts are leading you to peace. You see, that word, um, in, in, in Colossians uh, chapter 3, it says that let the peace of God rule in your heart. Let the peace of God. The peace of God should be always prevalent, ruling in your heart. That word rule in, in Colossians 3, it means or it comes from the word where we would get the word umpire. So the umpire kind of controls the game. The umpire makes the decisions, to, says where it's in bounds, out of bounds, what's in, what's out, and so it creates a peaceful environment to play the game. Well, that is the peace of God is your and my umpire to know that of my thoughts and God's thoughts that we are connected and going in the right direction. And so the, the, the peace of God. See, whenever you are getting thoughts of condemnation or guilt, or unrest, you can be sure that those thoughts are not God. If you get a, a thought that's condemning and you feel like you need to just go and talk to somebody and give them your two cents, probably not God. Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't go talk to somebody if something's wrong. The Bible says we should. But there's a big difference between condemning and loving. 
And so that is one of our first guiding principles. The second guiding principle is that if they are consistent with the Word of God. Remember I said to you that the Word of God is simply God's thought with clothes on. And God's, your thoughts, like God's voice speaking to you, will never violate God's Word. It is settled forever in heaven. His Word cannot be changed. It is... Um, it will never violate the Word of God. And then the, the last point, the, thir the, the third point that has to line up these three things is that if your thoughts are consistent with the character and nature of God. And so when I want to discern the voice of God in my thought life, I, I can um, judge it with, is it consistent with the character of God? His nature. See, God is holy and God is love, and God is merciful. And if we understand those things, that God is gracious, that he's loving, that he's kind, and so my thoughts, I, I, so if I get a thought that is outside that realm, I can know that that thought isn't for me. Now here's what's really important. What we do and see and experience influence our thought life. How many know that's true? And so I, I, I want to be influenced. I want my spirit and God's spirit to be connected. But if I, if I watch stuff on, on TV or movies that is directly opposed to the nature and character of God, what's going to happen? There'll be a conflict, <laughs> right? Your spirit will be grieved. You're going to be, ugh. If you're, if you're scrolling through Facebook, the other day, I got a friend request from somebody, and I thought it was somebody that I knew because it was the same name. So I, I clicked on there. I don't accept friendships uh, easily anymore, quickly. Uh, so I, I clicked on their profile, and I went, whoa, I'm just delete, delete, delete. <laughs> it just automatically offended my spirit. Why? Because my spirit and God's spirit are... They're connected. And I don't want there to be a conflict. That, and so, and, and as soon as I allow that to happen, of course, my peace will leave me. And so, um, so we got to be careful uh, what you fill your mind with. Isaiah 26, verse 3, it says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. So, just to, um, if you look at this, you know, here's what, we, what, and this is how I used to approach this. And we sometimes teach this, you know, not, uh, you know, not um, inadvertently. And that we sometimes God speak to us in a dy dynamic way, in a dramatic way, in a very clear way. That's happened to me a few times where I felt, I, you know, it's a dramatic experience of God speaking to me. But that is not normal Christianity. What's normal Christianity is that God gives me a sense of His Spirit working in me, His direction in my life. I don't need to pray in the morning, should I go to work today? I don't need to pray and say, which street should I drive on to get to work. Well, actually, I don't ever pray to which street I should drive on because I can't drive because of my eyesight. However, here's how this works. There is times and seasons where there's a dramatic expression of God working in someone's life. And what, what we've done, as, as you, and you see this in the Bible. You see this in, in Hannah, for example. You see this in in, um, in King David, you see that with the Balaam's uh, donkey, where the donkey talks. These, these are dramatic experiences. But what we've done is we've said to people, oh, this should be our normal Christian experience. It wasn't for them, and it won't be for you. However, it could happen. And so on Saturday, or Friday, I think it was, um, I go out for my normal run, and, and I felt, I just felt in my spirit that I should run on this particular area. So I started running. And then it came to me, 
oh, there's one street I forgot to run on. And so I didn't, I remember I told you I covered, I ran all the streets in Nelson. I prayed a blessing on every single house in the city of Nelson. But I didn't do this one street. And so without any kind of great fanfare, the Lord reminded me and brought me to that street. And so I did that particular street. It wasn't like there was, you know, uh, uh, you know fireworks and, and uh, you know, a big you know, thunderbolt and, and uh, you know, a banner across the sky, Jim Reimer, run on Klein Avenue, or Klein, uh, Klein Road, Klein Road. It was very gentle and simple and just like a relationship you would have with anyone. So what I, I want to, if you look at this scripture here, the watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to the voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brought them all out, um, and when he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they what? They know, or that word in the, in the original language is they discern. It's gentle. It's easy. And, you know, God can turn a ship that's moving, <laughs> but if it's tied to a dock, it's pretty hard to turn it around. And so what he's calling us to do is follow him. Relax. Let his spirit talk to us. And very gently, he'll show you which way to go, how to respond. If you just let him, you'll hear his voice in your thoughts. God bless you. So next week, uh, God willing, I want to talk about um, the dramatic times. <laughs> I want to talk about the prophetic and how God can speak to you in the prophetic, in the thunderclap, and uh, in that kind of voice. Um, and so I'm going to try to uh, talk about that so that we can, because it, 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 it goes both, you know, there is that experience in our Christian life as well. Would you stand with me? And uh, so I, those of you who are listening online and those that are in this room, I don't know the spiritual condition of every person in this room, but I can tell you this that unless your spirit comes alive in Christ, you cannot really discern the voice of God. And God is speaking to you right now. If you have never come alive in your spirit, our sin alienates us from God. It separates us from God. And God doesn't want that. He wants to connect with you. He wants to be united with you. He wants his spirit to be in you. And actually, you want it too. You just don't realize it. I want to invite you today, if you're in that position, or maybe you've kind of fallen away from God, and, you know, God hasn't fallen away, but you've kind of just went your own way, and you haven't been intimate with God. I want to invite you to accept Christ today, to say, you know, I want to be united with him. I want my spirit and God's spirit to be connected. I, the, when Jesus went to the cross, he died for you, he rose again for you, so that our spirit could come alive in Christ. And if you're here today and that has never happened with you, that has never happened to you, or you feel alienated from God today, there's good news. He wants to be reconciled with you. And um, we're going to uh, sing a song. And, and if you would like to have prayer, we're going to pray with you. Is there anyone in this room that would say, Pastor Jim, uh, just pray for me. Just put your hand up right now. Put your hand up if you want me to pray for you. Father, we thank you for all those hands that are going up and Father, I pray, God, that there would be a miracle that would happen here today, a, a birth 
a spiritual birth would take place, a born again experience where our spirit and God's spirit would be connected. That we would no longer be alienated or enemies of God, but in fact, we would be one with him, reconciled to him. Every hand that's raised, Lord, may their experience a connection with God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Those of you who lifted your hands up, if you would like to come for personal prayer, uh, don't be embarrassed. We won't, keep you, we'll just, we won't keep you long. Just come up as we sing this song and we'll pray for you. Anybody wants prayer, we're going to invite some of our, our team to come and pray with us and, and uh, to help us. But just come at this time. Let's be connected to the Spirit of God in our spirits today. Come at this time. I'm calling on the God of Jacob Whose love endures through generations I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on the God of Moses the one who opened up the ocean I need you now to do the same thing for me Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you now how I need you now Oh rock, oh rock of ages I'm standing on your faithfulness On your faithfulness God of Mary whose favor rests upon the lowly I know with you all things are possible I'm calling on the God of David who made a shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath, but I've got my own giants. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you now How I need you now Oh rock, oh rock of ages I'm standing on your faithfulness On your faithfulness children then you hear your children now you are the same God you are the same God you answered prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same God you are the same God you were providing then you are providing now you are the same god you are the same god you moved in power then god move in power now you are the same god
God. You are the same God. You were a healer then. You are a healer now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You were a Savior then. You are a Savior now. You are the same God. You are the same God. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. You free the captives, then you're freeing hearts right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You touch the lepers then. I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit. Almighty river, come and fill me again. Come and fill me again. Come and fill me again. Thank you, Jesus. As we open our hearts and our spirit to God, He will never disappoint you. He'll fill you. He'll pour his heart and life into you. He loves you. And I know that some of us here in this room are filled with condemning thoughts. I want to tell you that those thoughts are not coming from God. And I want you to just make a decision, even right now, say, God, I want your thoughts to flood my heart. Your thoughts of love, acceptance, forgiveness. Let, invite Holy Spirit into your spirit. Invite him in. Say, I'm here. I'm open. Speak to me. I know some of you even are, you know, I'm, you know a little bit shy or embarrassed to Come and ask for prayer. I just, those are not God thoughts. Those are, you know, the enemy's thoughts to try to keep you from experiencing all that God has for you. I just want to encourage you to, to let go and just let God work through you. It's a wonderful thing. It'll open up all kinds of new experiences for you. Secret wisdom that you never even imagined will flood into your hearts and minds. And so we're going to say, God bless you, and you can be on your way. And, but just carve out some time in the day, every day, where you open your heart and let God and you, where you commune. And we're here for you. If you want to talk or pray, we're here for you. God bless you.